Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning. It's March 10th, and we have sprung forward, or we've been springing forward this morning. So, um, the sun's just now coming up, and it's 49 degrees. I'm in Orange Beach, Alabama, and I'm gardening for butterflies in Zone 9A, and I'm Rachel. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to share with you so many things. I found so many cool creatures, and I've been working in the garden. It's not done, of course. It's just, um, it, but it's getting there. But uh, let me come along with me and let me show you what's going on. The sun is just starting to peek up over the trees and the wind just started to kick up out of nowhere. I, I don't know if that's because it's getting warmer. I'm not sure. But um, so I've got a collection of pots. My favorite pots out here in front of the Rose Arbor. And I've got... A few things in here that I've never grown before um, so I'm gonna show y'all those so I have I've always wanted them but I've never grown them but they are just making me so happy because you can just come along and pet them these lambs ears they're so fun and this pot happened to have one of those uh, wild petunias in it so I left it and I'm just really liking the bright green with the kind of gray green of the lambs ears I have grown this fern leaf uh, um, lavender before, and it will grow really big, about three feet wide and three feet tall if it grows like it did for me before. And um, I'm really liking the gray-green of that with the lamb's ear and then the dusty miller that's just uh so cool and then i've got the that grass in the back and i'm not sure what grass that is but those kind of colors i'm going to add more of those this year i need gray green and some white but um so this is something i've never grown before this sedum and it's got one little thing right there i think it's going to be like hot pink i hope it's hot pink i hope it's not red because if it's red then it will not be able to stay here and I left this tag in here so I could show you what it is. I don't think I've ever grown a mini Vista. So it's Super Tunia Mini Vista Hot Pink. So I don't know what it's going to do. Now I know the Super Tunia will get huge. And I'm guessing that this will too. But I've got uh, Petunias and Pansies right here. And I put the um, Lemon Ball Sedum in this little... Um, my friend gave me these butterfly containers and I got my husband to uh, cut some holes in the bottom of them for drainage. So that's what's happening at the front. Um, and I'm really enjoying that for right now. This salvia is one of the original salvias and I don't know if it's mixed mystic spires or indigo spires, but when I first put the, um, rose arbor up i planted one here and then a uh, salvia lucantha and then another one there and it just got so crazy and eventually i had to cut them back and then i yanked them mostly out but that one is just a piece of one and it's coming back and look at these roses just two right here i think it's james galway it's blooming but i'm excited because there are lots of buds on those I always wanted clematis and I've planted one a couple of years ago and this is it right here. It keeps coming back and giving me hope and it's just so pitiful but it just never does anything so maybe this is the year for it. We will see. And I decided to do something controversial yet brave. And what I've done is I have planted stuff in the ground. Um, so far, no armadillos have come and dug it up. But um, if they do, here's what I've decided to do. Or if when they do, I don't know. Um, I'm Whatever they dig up, I'm going to put them in a pot and rescue them. So we'll see how far, how long we can go with this. I was going to show you what they are. So I put this stone pathway right here because... When it rains, water just pours off the corner of the house right here, and it just makes like a river. And so I need to hold the ground in place right here. So I've got this path, but also to go and feed the birds because we put bird seed on this little post right here. 
I've got a lot of things coming back um, from last year, mostly salvia. Salvia is so resilient, y'all. Y'all, I love it. I'm, oh, I love salvia. So I've made a bunch of cuttings of it and they're growing back. But here's what I've done. So I've got Achillea right here that's about to bloom. And then yesterday I was planting out some stuff and I decided to plant it in threes. So I've got three anise hyssop right here. One, two, three. And they're going to get big and tall. Almost everything in here is going to get big and tall. And I put blue-eyed grasses. I had a pot of blue-eyed grasses and I just yanked them all out and like cut them up in pieces. Oh yeah, here. That's, that's, see, and now they're blooming and aren't they adorable? So I'm going to have the path lined by blue-eyed grasses and also this carex because I had a bunch of carex in pots and I just put them up here. I've got star, uh, I was going to say star anise, but that's not right. There's a blueberry bush. Anyway, everything's looking kind of scraggly and it's not really standing out well. I'm, I still haven't mulched everything, but I hope you can tell well, there's some blue there. It's gonna be blue and purple, and I've still got some um, salvia in here, the uh, coral nymph salvia. They survive the winter, little ones, but they'll pop up, so it's gonna be pink and blue and purple. I'm leaving these pots because this is where I planted my passion flower, my passion flower vine last year, and I thought that if they had died, but look, this one is coming back. So I don't want to yank these pots out. I think the pots, uh, they probably rooted in the ground and I'm going to leave that. And I've planted another passion flower vine here and then the passion flower vine and this is coming back. I've got another passion flower vine over there. This is a coral nymph salvia that made it through the winter. And I've got one there and there and I planted this rose bush that I had in the pot and it had rooted in the ground and I got two more of them I hope they're the, the same but I got them from Kim's nursery I wish you could tell how blue this blueberry bush is but look it's got these little um I think this is where the blueberries are going to grow little little blooms but it's so pretty the color is lovely and I'm I'm really hoping that it'll fill out and look nice in here I'm not gonna leave this center portion just like this. I just put these pots here to get them out of the way. But down here on this side, I'm gonna turn this area into a salvia forest. Now last year I had salvia in pots right here, but this time I'm going to plant them all in the ground because um, they didn't get dug up by the armadillos. And you can see right here, I've got a salvia amistad. Made it through the freeze. It's coming back strong. It's very encouraging. So this whole area right here, right now it's just kind of like carpeted with violets, but it's just gonna be a salvia forest. And I am so excited about that. We had several nights uh, in the low 20s this winter and these petunias survived that. Um, the st other stuff that was in this pot with the petunias, which is usually somewhat hardy, died. But the petunias lived. So I did not know that they could be hardy like that. Something else that surprised me that survived the freeze, I've got some dahlias. I've got dahlias there in a pot and over there that are coming back. And then right here. So I've got three pots of dahlias that I did not expect to ever, ever see again. This blue star flower is looking so pretty. I really like its uh, pale green foliage. And something that's cool is last year I planted um, some, uh, uh, oh, what is this called? Oh yeah, Dutchman's Pipeline. And, oh gosh, you can't see it, why? Okay, so here it is. But right down here, you can see it just looks dead, dead, dead. And it's so shocking. It's coming back. I've got a couple of them with leafing out right here and there. And they're kind of 
getting up into the orange tree, but that's fine. You can see that the fog garden needs some attention. I've accidentally knocked some of the stones out of it when pulling the hose around. But look at this, I've got a lyre leaf, lyre leaf salvia right here. Oh, isn't it pretty? Lovely colors. I've got several of those growing throughout the garden now. You know what, I think it's called lyre leaf sage. But don't you love the veining in the leaves? I've got this in a pot right here. It's so resilient. I thought um, it was. That's uh, that's what I love about native plants. I'm gonna I'm gonna plant more native stuff in the ground. It can even survive, I guess, armadillos. But here are all my cuttings. And yesterday, I guess I should have waited until I had had um, videoed this because yesterday I came in here and they were way taller and more floppier and I popped the tops out of them so that they would get a little sturdier at the base. But um, these are gonna be my salvia forest. I'm going to plant them all. And of course I, I did plant some, um, uh, cause I love these kale. So I'm excited about these kale. I'm just gonna leave the kale in the pots. I'm not gonna plant them in the ground, but I love the colors of them. And I'm gonna kind of add them in, in pots to the salvia forest and look at the salvia lucantha so happy okay i'm doing some seed starting and something that i'm experimenting with i've got that seed starter and i've poured water in this bucket and filled it up and did it like this my sister reminded me that this is what you need to do you need to wet the medium before you put it in the little seed things and I'm putting them in here and then I'm shoving it down uh, so that, to make sure they're all filled up. This is the brand of seed starting mix that I'm using and these are the little 72 cell things that I got. I ordered these from Walmart and I think they were like five or six dollars and then this bag of seed starting mix was like eight dollars at Ace. Um, so well, I did start seeds earlier in the year and I tried an experiment with the seed starting mix or just the regular potting mix and it turns out that I liked the seed starting mix better because it was more solid when I went to get the seedling out of the cell. Um, the regular potting mix kind of fell apart and that could have been my fault but that was my experience with that. I planted seeds and some of them are coming up. It's taken some longer so you know I'm not the best at planting seeds but I've got them in the potting shed because last year when I had seeds I made the mistake of having them outside and when the rain came uh, it just pounded them to pieces and, and they were destroyed so I've got them in here I've got bush basil cleome millet one thing I'm sad about there's only three millet here Ugh. and I don't know if the others are gonna um, just a bunch of Elysium um, I've got uh, some cardinal basil that I've never grown before. Gumfrina makes me feel like I can do anything. Look at it, almost every single seed came up. Um, I don't know about these. I don't know if they're gonna work, but then I'm gonna have some pink salvia and I hope some of these other things will come up. Um, oh, here's something I'm excited about. This is a hollyhock, and it seems to be one that will grow in the south and hopefully not get that rust that other hollyhocks get. I saw, it's, her name's Jerry Landers. She had these kind of hollyhocks in her garden, and she's somewhere in the south. I can't remember where, but uh, that gave me hope that I could have some. And then over here, I planted a bunch of coleus. Coleus is super easy to grow from seed, but I don't know what colors these are gonna be. And um, golden hyssop, which will be, is an anise hyssop, but it's gonna have like a, a pale green leaf to it. And then this is something new for me, blue flax. It's supposed to be a perennial. Um, I'm, I, I don't know what it's gonna look like, so exciting. And then just some more anise hyssop over here that I'm saving to plant somewhere else. It's Sunday, um, February 25th. I didn't make a video this morning because my daughter's sick and I decided to make chicken soup instead. But look what has happened. We have 
an eastern black swallowtail that has emerged. Let's see. I'm not sure how long it's been here, but um, I may just take the stick that it's on and stick it in this pot with the fennel and let it enjoy being in the sunshine for a little bit. And I want it to know where the fennel is because if it's a girl, I sure want her to come back and lay eggs on my fennel. Oh, look, look, it's already climbed up onto the fennel. So hopefully it will remember where it was when it comes back to lay eggs. I have eight Eastern Black Swallowtail chrysalises left, and this one is so dark. I wonder if this is the next one that's gonna emerge. Um, it's very exciting, y'all, because actually it's warm enough for them to live out here now. Um, today it's getting up to like 63, and uh, the whole week is gonna be pretty warm. So I think they're gonna make it. Isn't this big lizard so pretty? He's in the potting shed. He's been enjoying living here all winter. You can see he's fat and juicy. Doesn't this lemon ball sedum just look like it's lit from within? I'm loving it so much. I've just found, I think it's a sphinx moth uh, pupa. I was digging around and I found it just popped out and it freaked me out, man. Because it moves. It, it's, well, I was going to see if it would move for you. And my hands are just disgusting. I've been digging and digging. But I'm super excited about this because, oh, can you see it? There, there, it's moving. Um, I'm gonna put it in a container and see when, see that right there? See, um, ooh. And keep it until it emerges and we will see what it looks like. I just got some information on YouTube about how to do it. The lady who raises sphinx moths uh, said to put the pupa in a little critter keeper and put a piece of paper towel on the bottom. And then the important part is to tape a washcloth onto the side of the um, critter keeper. So when he emerges, he's gonna climb up this washcloth and hang from the top of the critter keeper so that he can dry out his wings and then put the lid on it so he can't escape. Look at this incredible spider that I found on my rose. I didn't know what it was. I didn't have my glasses on. I went over and I kind of touched this area before I realized. Let's see if I can get it to move. Look at that. It's the same color as the leaves. Is that not incredible? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's red. It's like a reddish brown spider. Is that not really neat? It, it doesn't want to, I hope it doesn't jump on me. Oh my gosh, but I want it to move. Ah, okay, see, okay. I'm sure I've told y'all about these snails before. The, this is a rather large snail. See, it's about an inch and a half long. But what's cool about these snails is that they eat other snails and slugs. So if you have these in your garden, you wanna have them around because they will get rid of the naughty ones. Is it a hawk? Yeah, I think it is a hawk. It looks like a... Uh... I don't know the difference between a hawk and a falcon. Oh, it could be a falcon. But I don't know. I can't. Look at this fungi that I just found growing on the stump of my tangerine tree. It's kind of gelatinous feeling and and I looked it up and they said that fungi somewhat like this are grown in China and they're edible. And look, there's a little snail, a bad, bad little snail. But 
isn't it cool? Because look how big it is and it's just so interesting. Last year I had this Eastern Blue Star in a pot and it outgrew it and I planted it right here and it came back. I didn't expect that. But look at how lovely these little, now to me they don't look blue, they look kind of uh, grayish, but it's called an Eastern Blue Star and it's rather alluring. Thank y'all so much for coming along with me and looking at my garden. I hope that y'all have got some amazing things going on in your garden. I know you do because God is good. And um, I uh, can't wait to talk to y'all about what y'all are doing and uh, find out what your adventures are. And y'all, let's just play outside. God bless y'all. Have a good day. Bye.